Notre Dame will receive. And off we go for the season opener. Notre Dame and Texas. And taking an ease on here, Carlisle in the end zone for Notre Dame. So out comes Malik Zaire. First start under the bright lights and here at Notre Dame Stadium. Those are the numbers in the Music City Bowl. He earned MVP honors in that big victory over SEC Power LSU. And he brings out a very talented Notre Dame team and up front, very big, including Riley Stanley at the left tackle position. So he's got a lot of cushion out there, Doug, in front of him to kind of take the pressure off. Him. Very strong offensive line. I would look for him to run the ball early to calm himself down. So the Irish begin it on the ground and across the 25. As we meet the Irish is Tory Hunter. And these starting lineups brought to you by Direct TV. And so it's a talented group. Deep Tari and Polston, the featured back. We'll also see CJ Procise, Will Fuller with 15 touchdown receptions last year for Notre Dame. Durham Smythe leads a talented group at tight end. There is Stanley, who could have gone high in the NFL draft. It is a huge offensive line. Nelson is the newcomer there, but Nick Martin, the captain, alongside Steve Elmer and Mike McGlinchey, who's six feet eight. And on second down and eight, there is Folston looking for a hole and getting it close to the 29-yard line. That'll bring up third down before he's brought down by Malik Jefferson. Freshman starter on that Texas defensive unit. First third down situation could be a true pass situation, getting away from all the zone read stuff that Zaire loves to run. So the play clock down to three, and they just get it off. Zaire pumps twice wide open at the 45 yard line is Chris Brown for the first down Gain of 17 on Zaire's first pass of the night great patience in the pocket what he wanted was not there right away He waited with the football and allowed Chris Brown to work left to right into the middle of the field It's not there right away. Hold on to the ball and come into the second window So quickly up to the 45 is Notre Dame with a first and 10. And Zaire, the quick hitter in and out of the arms of Alizé Jones, a freshman, getting his first chance and drops the football. Young, talented, tight end position. They're going to keep him in mostly pass situations. He's a dynamic kid, can go up and get the ball, high pointed, great speed for the tight end position. Gilly calls him the best athlete I have ever coached. Says he's never seen another player like him, but he drops the ball in his first opportunity here at Notre Dame, which brings up second down and 10. And this is Polston. Polston up close to the 49 yard line before he's brought down by Jefferson. Gain of four for Polston. As the starting lineups are brought to you by Direct TV, a look at the Longhorns up front. Davis, Jackson, Ford, and Roberson. There is Jefferson, who's going to be the cornerstone of the defense you would expect for many years to come. We've got a freshman corner in John Bonney, and the most experienced and maybe best player on defense in that secondary, certainly Duke Thomas. On third down and seven. Corey Robinson in motion. To Zaire's right. Sets up in the slot. Zaire pulls it back and then completes it to Durham Smythe. And Smythe very close to the first down. Is the leading candidate at the moment to become the full time starter at tight end. But as Brian Kelly told us, they will play four or five tight ends, and the job is really still wide open. Again, they bring a blitz. Zaire shows patience in the pocket. Great protection from that offensive line. He holds on to the football. Smythe working over the middle. Creating a fourth and short. Yeah, it is fourth and inches. And the Notre Dame offense is going to go for it here at the Texas 45. And 
little confusion there, and a flag flies in. Ball start. Offense. Number 72. Five yard penalty. Fourth down. And that's on Nick Martin, the center. Returning captain for Notre Dame back at his center position. And what a huge penalty that is, Doug. Now fourth and six, they're forced to punt. Forced to punt on the way. They have so much confidence in their offensive line that even early in the game in the fourth down situation, middle of the field, Brian Kelly decided he wanted to go for it. DeJay Johnson back deep to receive the punt from Tyler Newsom. He is a new punter. In fact, Kyle Brinza. Is in the NFL, so there's a new kicker, new punter for Notre Dame. And that one is a touchback in the end zone, so Texas will come up on offense when we return. Costly penalty cost the Irish a chance to keep the chains moving. Notre Dame Stadium. And the aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Whether you drive 100 yards or 100 miles, choose Goodyear tires for superior performances. Goodyear, more driven. Well, if you still have doubts about how big a game this is, check out the private jets lined up at the South Bend Airport, Doug. That's yours on the end of the line there. Yeah, yeah, sure, right next to yours. So here is Texas. And Tyrone Swoops, who started 12 games last year but was really thrown in the fire for Texas after David Ash was injured in the opener and actually was forced to retire because of the concussion. So he got a baptism by fire last year and his first give of the game goes along the right side to Amani Foreman. So here is Swoops, Doug, and it really was a little bit unfair for a kid like that to be thrown in, just totally unexpected, but it, again, you got to be ready for your chance, and it just all unraveled on Texas. Absolutely thrown in the fire too early. So on second down and eight, here comes Swoops, keeping it to the left side, tries to stiff on his way past Elijah Shoemate. Gets a couple more out of the Carry brought down by James Onawalo after gain of five. He's six foot four, 243. He's not an agile runner, but he is a very strong runner and gets extra yards falling forward. Again, the opening series for Texas. We're told that we will see Gerard Hurd. We'll see how much of him we see, and that has a big part to do how Tyrone Swoops performs. Now third and three, flushed out of the pocket, rolling to his right, and just throwing it out of bounds to the near sideline. Jalen Smith on the coverage there of John Burke. That'll bring up fourth and three, and the Texas punting unit. James Onowalu coming off the edge, beats the block at the tackle, but loses contain, which can cost you later. You can't lose contain. Stay on the upfield shoulder. Jalen Smith recovers for him to force the throw. Brand new punter for Notre Dame. And as C.J. Sanders stands back deep, the freshman for Notre Dame, Michael Dixon, who is playing Australian rules football. This is his very first game as a college punter. And he can boom it, and then he can hit some other kinds of punts. So his first punt isn't great. He had a step off to the side that almost has that appearance of an Australian rules football player. So Notre Dame will take over from its own 45 in its second series when we come back. It is hard to miss. You see the large building structures which are surrounding Notre Dame Stadium. It's the Campus Crossroads Project, the largest building construction project ever here at Notre Dame. $400 million project in full swing. Notre Dame will be flanked by those structures on three sides. And a part of it is a brand new video board which will be installed there on the south end yes a hundred by fifty foot video board in the house that rockney built and then you've got the other side of the stadium which will give us a clear view of touchdown jesus there's the final artist rendering of the project which is expected to be completed in august of 2017 in time for the season so that begins this series with a little swing out to cj Prosice who represents one of the biggest changes on Notre Dame's offense this season, Doug. Not just because he can catch it out of the backfield. We've seen that before. But we're going to see more design runs for ProSize. He's an explosive runner. They were very surprised last spring when they put him back there to carry the ball. Gain of six for ProSize. And so on second down and four, this is ProSize in the running role. So he's moved from wide receiver to the running back position for Notre Dame's offense. And again, 
Notre Dame without the services of Greg Bryant, who's no longer with the program, ruled academically ineligible. He was a part of the backfield last year, but he has left the program. And so now you've got ProSize moved in there, which has given them a lot more options on the ground, and they are excited about his north-south running abilities. So the Irish quickly into Longhorn territory with 9-10 left in the opening quarter. And Zaire gives it to Fulstad. He goes north-south, picks up the first down and more, and almost beat one man there to get deep into the Longhorn secondary. A gain of 15 before he's brought down by John Bonney, but a little bit shaken up as Fulston limps off. Great job at the point of attack by McGlinchey and Smythe stretching the play and a great north-south cut. Fulston just 5'9", but a solid 214 pounds. 889 yards last year for Notre Dame as its leading rusher out to the far side. He swings it out to Amir Carlisle, who puts on a nice move and gets the first down. Duke Thomas and company swarming him, but not after a gain of 12. It's all a numbers game. If there's too many guys in the box and there's not enough outside, throw it outside for the wide receiver screen. Amir Carlisle, a former running back, shows his running back skills. So the gain of 13 has it down to the Texas 15. And there is Fulston being worked on as they're grabbing his right leg on the sideline. Wilson's coming as another flag has been thrown. False start. Offense. Number 79. Five-yard penalty. First down. So the second mental error for that vaunted offensive line. First it was Martin and now Steve Elmer. Fourth and short procedure and red zone illegal procedure. Bad areas to have basically stupid penalties. Brings it back to the 20 and now on first and 15. Procise flanking Zaire in the backfield. And again, Fulston being worked on on the sidelines. Up like he was going to pass it. Quickly runs it up the middle and he's chased down by Nashon Hughes. One of the bright spots of that defensive line up front for Texas. Redshirt sophomore. Very athletic defensive end slash linebacker in Hughes. An open field tackle on Zaire is difficult. Keeps his leverage and brings him to the ground. Hughes has an edge to him. He even hit his own quarterbacks in the spring game. It's all going to be interesting to chart Zaire's runs tonight, especially from a design standpoint. Quick get it out here to Will Fuller which will bring up third down. But Brian Kelly told us about Zaire's running abilities when we asked him. He said it's going to be about 12 to 15 max runs for Zaire. Zaire has to last the whole season for Notre Dame. You can't wear him out. It has to be situational, whether red zone or just important situations for him to carry the football. Well, they might have to rely on him a little bit even more with Bolston still being worked on on the sidelines. So third and 11. Play clock down to zero. They just get it off. Zaire with time over the middle, and it's a touchdown to who else but Will Fuller. Picking up right where he left off last season when he was third in the country with 15 touchdown receptions, number one for Fuller in 2015. It's only a four-man rush, and Zaire shows a lot of patience hanging in the pocket and waiting for Will Fuller to come into the second window again and hits him over the middle of the field. So Notre Dame on the board first with six and a half minutes left. And here is the debut of Justin Yoon at kicker for Notre Dame. Again, Kyle Brinza has moved on to the NFL where he earned a spot with the Tampa Bay Bucks. And again, it was very close with the play clock. Getting down to double zeros, or in this case, zero before it. Well, that particular runoff there shows it was zero before he got it off. So here's Justin Yoon, the true freshman, with his first kick. And what was expected to be a long and successful career at Notre Dame. 
So after a seven-play, 55-yard drive on Notre Dame's second offensive series of the night, it ends with that familiar touchdown zone ending. Will Fuller in the end zone for the Irish. Their second offensive series, a strike from Zaire to Will Fuller. And there is Zaire on the phone talking about his first two series of the night. Four for four on the touchdown drive. He has shown unbelievable patience in the pocket so far. A lot of that has to do with the pass protection he's getting. Kelly telling us earlier in the week one of his biggest missions was to calm Zaire down. He has a tendency to get really fired up. And this is Tyler Newsom with a kick that travels no further than out of bounds at about the 23 yard line. So Tyler Newsom, the new kickoff man for Notre Dame. Not exactly what Brian Kelly was looking for. Well, Fulston out of the lineup right now for the Irish and with more on his condition, let's send it back down to Catherine. Yeah, Dan, unfortunate news here for Tari and Fulston. He will not return to the lineup tonight. He is the leading returning rusher for Notre Dame. He was being worked on by the medical staff. His right knee is wrapped and he is very emotional on the sidelines with his teammates, Dan. All right, so Tyrone Swoops still in at quarterback for Texas. As with that poor kick, they start at the 35, so good field position, and Swoop's showing his mobility just a little bit, getting it across the 40-yard line for a gain of about five. It'll bring up second down for Swoops, Jalen Smith. Don't let him fool you. He's a big guy, but he does run well. He's very effective as a runner when he's aggressive. And here is an example of this quick and tempo by the Texas offense. On second down and four, they don't waste any time. Give it to Deonta Foreman. And that's what Charlie Strong was telling us, Doug. He said 98% of the recruits in Texas run the zone read option. And so we had to change our ways on offense. It allows those Texas recruits to come in and perform quicker, be up to speed with the offense, and allows him to recruit Texas much better. Third and short from the 44. And Notre Dame is going to stop Ford this time at the line of scrimmage and that'll bring up fourth down and about one Daniel Cage in the middle stuffing it up crushing this block no pen no giving ground defensively there's two freshmen in this Texas offensive line that are young and the defensive line of Notre Dame has to take advantage of that well, on fourth and two we'll see what the Aussie Michael Dixon can do with his second punt. And it's a low flyer and gets a Texas bounce. And it's going to be down inside the Notre Dame five yard line. So the Irish pin back after that 53 yard punt by Dixon. Notre Dame leads it 7 0. Just less than five minutes left in the opening quarter. Welcome back to Notre Dame. Notre Dame up 7-0 over Texas. The story so far is the offensive line of Notre Dame giving Malik Zaire time to throw the football. He's allowed to pat the ball, wait for guys to come into second window. Look at this pocket. Great vision in front of him delivering the ball. In the red zone, again waiting. The freshman, Malik Jefferson, jumps the underneath round on a third down play. Patiently puts the ball in the second window. Touchdown roll forward and all of those offensive linemen will run through a wall for that guy Perry he stand his fourth season at Notre Dame one of the best in the business but the Irish backed up at their five yard line to begin this series up seven to nothing so Zaire standing on his goal line to begin this series and they'll hand it off with Bolston still out of the lineup to CJ Procise so it'll be interesting to see what that does to the Notre Dame running attack for the rest of the game. Holston walking through the tunnel and off the field for further treatment. And that could bring into play one of two freshman running backs a little sooner. We knew that we'd see maybe one of them, either Josh Adams or Dexter Williams, but Procise in there at the moment with Holston out.
and they give it to Procise. Get the feeling he's going to be a busy man tonight. Spins and twists his way across the 20 for the first down. Dylan Haynes makes the stop for the Longhorns, but not before a gain of 13. Watch left guard Quentin Nelson, a young rookie. Here's motion. He's getting to speed. The left guard 56, Quentin Nelson, up and through on the pole. But pure speed, pure speed by Procise. He's a strong north-south runner. Tough to bring down. Six feet, 220, picks up the first down and gets Notre Dame a lot more breathing room. They fake it to him, and here comes Zaire. And Zaire brought down in the backfield for a huge loss. Edwin Freeman on the stop. Loss of four for Zaire. That's a great job of staying home by Freeman and not following the fake, doing his responsibility. And again, Malik Zaire is not easy to bring down in the open field. And you saw Zaire pulling on his face mask as if to say, where was the face mask call? And there is Freeman. Definitely got a good piece. Getting a clear grasp of it. But Notre Dame backed up now, second down and 14. Freeman, one of multiple freshman starters on defense for Texas. Second and 14, Zaire to the air, and he's got his man. Yes, complete. Close to the first down, Corey Robinson. In fact, he's going to move the chains. A big pickup there of 15 for the first. Big cushion by John Bonney out on the corner. Robinson, it's, it's an easy pitch and catch. Great protection again on the play. It's just like throwing versus air there. John Bonney is a hitter, though. He will come up and stick you. So much focus on Will Fuller, who got the only touchdown of the night so far, but that Notre Dame wide receiving court, deep and talented, and they are bunched up to the right, and Zaire goes their way, and Carlisle has a nice seam. Picks up another first down before he's run out of bounds by Jason Hall. Again, this is a zone read, and he just decides to throw it out there because of a numbers game and turns into a big play. Great block in the open field by Will Fuller. And speaking of that young Texas defense, as you look at the defensive coordinator, Vance Bedford, he told us, he said, this game could not be a worse scenario for our young defense on the road against a ranked team under the lights with all this tradition of Notre Dame. Bring up second down at 10 as Procise gets the carry. But we had fun talking with uh, Vance and some of the other Texas coaches, which of course include Charlie Strong, went to their practice and spent some time at his uh, pretty impressive facilities and program at Texas and Austin. I love Vance's quote of, they're so young, they don't know what they don't know. <laughs> he is a quote machine. Second down and seven. Here comes the pressure which Zaire avoids, and then he goes deep downfield and complete to Fuller. So Zaire showing the mobility, escapes the pressure for a gain of 12. Free rusher off the edge. He just sidesteps Tim Cole like he's not even there. Moves, he's so athletic, and he's controlled movement. It's not a panic movement. Quickly on the move, and Russell to the ground by Nation. Here's his precise, and a flag comes in. Well, yeah, Hughes has an edge to him. He's a little bit of a chippy player. He wants to get in your face and stir it up. Personal foul, horse collar tackle, defense number 40. Half the distance to the goal from the end of the run. Automatic, first down. Oh, that is a costly one for Hughes. He did have his hand inside that collar of the shoulder pad. A strong stiff arm, so it was his last resort to reach in and grab for something, and it wound up being the collar. Charlie Strong looks says it all. So a huge penalty against his Longhorns, and Notre Dame is inside the Texas 15 now with a first and ten. Closing minute of the opening quarter, Notre Dame trying to build on its 7-0 lead. And as predicted, Josh Adams, there he is in motion. The freshman running back getting his first carry of his career. And he is into the end zone. Josh Adams on his first carry of his Notre Dame career. Gets in for 14 yards out. The 
Here comes Adams in motion, a double tight end set, and they get the edge on the corner, and then it's pure speed to the corner of the end zone. How about that for your first carry of your career? Hello, Josh Adams, and again, Bolston out of the game. Who knows how much more will depend on the freshman from Warrington, Pennsylvania, who touches the ball for the first time and gets in for six. Justin Yoon with Deshaun Kaiser, who's the third string quarterback for Notre Dame, is the holder. Long snapper Scott Daly, the lone returnee of that kicking battery. And Notre Dame this time goes nine plays, 95 yards. Remember, they were backed up from their own five, and they do it in less than four minutes. Helped by the big penalty against Texas as Josh Adams takes it in to make it 14 0. Irish. With 102 left in the opening quarter, 14 0 lead over the visiting Texas Longhorns. And there is Brian Kelly with his quarterback, Malik Zaire. An interesting comment from Brian Kelly when we talked to him yesterday. He said he doesn't want Zaire to be the reason we win. He just can't be. He can be the reason we win, but he cannot be the reason we lose. And so, so far, Zaire has held up his end. Jay Johnson with a return for Texas gets it across the Longhorn 20. As we check out the starting lineups for Texas's offense, brought to you by Direct TV. John Burt is a freshman, and he's been with a first team unit ever since he got on campus. And he is a bright future with Texas. Jonathan Gray is the veteran return B from running back. And there is the offensive line with two freshmen up front Connor Williams at left tackle and Patrick Vahe at right guard. And as expected, and as they told us, in the first quarter, Texas changes quarterbacks, and that changes a lot, Doug, doesn't it? Gerard Hurd, who is in total contrast to Swoops. Exceptional athlete at the quarterback position. And he begins at his own 22, and he'll begin with a give to Jonathan Gray, and Gray, avoiding one Notre Dame defender, picks up the first down before Joe Schmidt runs him out. But a good start for Gerard Hurd, who gets 12 from Gray. Schmidt, such an important cog back in that Notre Dame defense after fracturing his ankle down the stretch of the season last year. And they give it to Gray again. This time he slips in, gets no more than a couple. Gray came out in the 2012 recruiting class as the number one ranked running back in the country. He's had some problems with some injuries, but this year says he's 100% healthy, and they expect him to really carry the load. He needs to carry the load offensively, and he's also asked to play special teams. He is all in. The freshmen at Texas have such enthusiasm and an energy level that the upperclassmen are asking to get involved in special teams. And Charlie Strong electing to let the final seconds of the opening quarter tick off, and Brian Kelly in Notre Dame with a 14-0 lead after the first 15 minutes. And we'll return to Notre Dame Stadium after these messages from your local NBC station. You're watching Notre Dame football on NBC, presented by Coke Zero. Beautiful early evening shot at Notre Dame Stadium. The Golden Dome in the background, and the Irish up 14-0. 80,000 plus enjoying the evening so far and Gerard Hurd in at quarterback for Texas a true freshman so taking the first snaps of his college career in relief of swoops and he swings it out to the Jay Johnson who after being suspended the first the last three seasons the latest by Charlie Strong again Strong putting his stamp on this program. DeJay Johnson says he finally gets it. He gets what Charlie Strong is all about, and he wants to make this final season his best. He's got a lot of big play potential. And the first down for Texas, just short of the 45-yard line. Bird. Flags come in, and there's a little bit of an example of his mobility. But we'll wait and see what the call is. Blazing speed, Hurd has from Denton, Texas. Competed for the starting job with Swoops. Holding. Offense. Number 66. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay first down. And that's going to move Texas back. Cedric Flowers, the left guard, with the penalty. 
He had the misfortune of getting matched up with Jalen Smith coming up through the middle of the pass rush. Jalen's just so athletic. He beat him across his face and he had to grab. But again, Gerard Hurd came in the game, the first two first downs for this Texas offense. He has a knack for moving the football. Let's see if he can recover from the setback of a holding penalty. So Swoots comes back in at quarterback for Texas on first and 20. That's Gray in motion to the right. Swoops takes a step back and then runs it up the middle. Still can't get to the line of scrimmage. Gain of six. An 18-year-old left tackle, Connor Williams, playing against Sheldon Day, a big-time collegiate player, goes for the cut and gets him to the ground. The coaches, the Texas coaches, say he is their best offensive lineman as a freshman. True freshman. Second and 14. Swoops is relieved shortly by her pressure from the right. Has to get rid of it, and it's incomplete to Foreman. So that'll bring up third and long. You mentioned that Swoops didn't have much of a chance last season, dug in large part due to the offensive line, and now he's got two freshmen up front for him, trying to give him time against a really talented Notre Dame defense. You know, very inexperienced though line last year. You thought, you know, being a second year, a little experience come around. No, two freshmen into the mix. Swoops incomplete, fourth down, and the Longhorns will have to punt. So Swoops a little confused on the last couple of plays as that Notre Dame pressure and defense, they had him covered. He wanted Gray, but he was flanked. Sheldon Day on the freshman again, slips him this time on the inside move, although the ball was going out the other direction on a screen and had to be thrown away. So the Irish with a chance to get some pretty decent field position as Dixon puts it away. This one is a good one. Drives C.J. Sanders back to the 17, and he goes down just across the 20. 43-yard punt, four-yard return. Notre Dame up 14 to nothing. Opening moments of the second quarter from South Bend. Hey, again, it's a... Uh, even tougher ticket when you don't play that much. Notre Dame leading the series 8-2. to two, But again, it is the first time in nearly two decades that Texas and Notre Dame have met. And here under the lights, Notre Dame with a 14-0 lead. As Zaire rolls out to his right and throws across his body. And that's complete to Torrey Hunter. And in the words of the coaches, Torrey Hunter, who has had his battles back from injury, has been the most impressive player offensively for Notre Dame, especially among the wide receiving group. That's a gain of 20 for Torrey Hunter, one of 11 Texans on the roster for Notre Dame. And this time wrapped up is C.J. Process. Nation Hughes, again a part of the stop, very active for Texas. There's a lot of burnt orange in Notre Dame Stadium tonight. The Texas fans allotted 5,000 seats. Seems like there's a little more that made it inside the stadium than just 5,000. But they're a bit quiet right now with Notre Dame in control. Quick spin and good to Procise. And there he is, leveraging that big six foot, 220 pound frame for a gain of nine. How about a wide receiver getting in the backfield with a north south cut on a power play with the guard pulling? He goes right up through it, gets into the mix, spins out. There's no fear in CJ Procise. Seven carries, 33 yards for Procise in his new role as running back for Notre Dame and looking to be even more valuable again with Tarian Folston, the leading rusher, who left the game in the first quarter with an injury. And here's Procise again. He's going to be caught in the backfield for a huge loss, and that's Malik Jefferson. We talk about important recruits for Charlie Strong, this was as big as it gets. That was the prize recruit for Texas. They got him out of, they got him away from Texas A&M. 
He is a very instinctive player, sees a gap and runs right through it. Cuts behind McGlinchey, pulling, and slips into the backfield for the tackle. Strong telling us that the acquisition of Jefferson really helped open the floodgates for recruiting for Texas. So on fourth and eight, Notre Dame forced a punt. And Tyler Newsom, who's got a huge leg, driving back Johnson inside the 10. So that is an example of what Tyler Newsom is capable of. 48-yard punt, but it was the hang time there that was really impressive. Longhorns in another hole when we come back. It's time for the Mercedes-Benz top performances. And the last time these two teams met, 1996, Notre Dame scored 10 points in the final three minutes. Autry Denson converted a fourth and goal from the sixth. And freshman kicker Jim Sanson kicked a 39-yard field goal as time expired to give the ninth-ranked Irish a win over the sixth-ranked Texas Longhorns. And that is your Mercedes-Benz top performances. Brian Kelly bringing in a couple of Notre Dame stars to the coaching staff, including Autry Denson, the all-time leading rusher for Notre Dame, now the running backs coach for the Irish. And we've got Gerard Hurd back in at quarterback for Texas. And he starts this drive from deep in his own territory at the eight and starts it off with a running play to Gray. So back to Hurd they go, Doug. Well, the first downs came with Hurd in the game, although it was unfair after the holding penalty for Swoops have to, having to go back in. But he puts the defense on edge. He makes you stay home. He makes you worry about contain, and he does throw the ball well. He looked very good in the spring game throwing the football. The coach is telling us that the noise and the hype won't bother Gerard Hurd, even though this is his first college experience, and he gets swarmed over and brought down for a loss. That is Jerry Tillery, the prize recruit on defense for Notre Dame, the true freshman from Shreveport, Louisiana, in the backfield. But it was Trombetti that came up field and turned him in on the outside edge. Get contained on this guy. Make him turn back and do the mix. So third and nine from the nine. A little bit of confusion there in the backfield, and Notre Dame swarms Hurd right near the goal line. Jalen Smith was there. Sheldon Day was there. He was close, but they mark him at the one. And Hurd had no chance as Jalen Smith was in there in a hurry. There he is on the edge, Doug. Out on the edge to the right. Jalen Smith, they're moving him around, trying to get different matchups with him, allow him to be a pure pass rusher. Started as an outside linebacker his freshman year. They moved him inside last year. And this year, the message to Jalen Smith is free him up and let him go. So from the back of his end zone, not much room at all for Dixon. And Notre Dame is going to have great field position with 9.15 left in the second quarter. As they mark that one deep into Texas territory. Malik Zaire has been very efficient with the football. He's 9 of 10 so far. It's primarily because of his feet and his eyes. Making good decisions. Seeing a numbers game. 3 on 2 on the outside. Get it out there. Blow off the read option and throw it out there for a hit screen. Get yards. You see the numbers game. Duke Thomas blitzes. It's 3 on 2. He pulls off the handoff. Throws outside again. He brings his feet with him with his throws. Here he starts to set. Good mechanics, sees the unblocked rusher, avoids under control, regathers and delivers a strike. The numbers for Zaire, very impressive. Again, just his second collegiate start. Everett Golson has moved on to Florida State. They battled for the job in the spring, but Golson could see the handwriting on the wall, and Zaire has led the Irish to this early lead as another flag comes in. Paul start offense number 78 five yard penalty first down that is the third penalty called on the third different player up front for Notre Dame that one on Stanley right now that's the only negative for Notre Dame today very undisciplined penalties penalties that are unforced that are in your control they can't happen man they might hear a thing or two <laughs> on that from Harry Eastan. 
McMartin's had a penalty, Elmer, and now Ronnie Stanley has back the Irish up on first and 15. And here is Zaire, who has another one of those running plays that you know you're going to get. But I guess the predicament is the blend of passing and running for Zaire, Doug, because the two guys behind Zaire, Deshaun Kaiser and Brandon Wimbush, the freshman, have yet to take a college snap. So how gutsy can you be with utilizing Zaire's running talents? Well, you, know, you only want to run him a few, you know, 12 to 15 times. You don't want to get him beat up. And here he steps out of bounds. Last year, in the playing time that he had, we never saw him him duck out of bounds. There's the backup to Zaire, Deshaun Kaiser, who the coaches say is ready to go should anything happen to Zaire. Second down at six. Quick drop, pass, and juggled around at the first down marker by Durham Smythe. Incomplete, they're saying. No. Ball was jumbled around by Smythe, but incomplete. This is his first inaccurate throw through behind him. Smythe got his hands on it pretty nicely. Doesn't touch the ground. Oh, yes, it does. It right there, so... Good call. Good call. Incomplete for Durham Smythe. No one looking more forward to this game than the junior from Belton, Texas. Grew up a half hour from the campus in Austin. Even though he grew up a Notre Dame fan, he did a verbal commitment to Mac Brown and ended up decommitting after he got his first look at Notre Dame, really his dream school. So Smythe at tight end on third and six. A timeout is called by the Irish. He was pretty fired up about this game even last year. He set a countdown. Countdown on his uh, phone, which is uh, a countdown clock in the Notre Dame locker room, which uh, he's been looking forward to this game. When you grow up in Texas, Doug, uh, it is really kind of a, a difficult proposition, especially for players who feel the pressure of going to Texas and in the case of Duran Smythe, he felt that pressure, got the offer from Mac Brown, and he said, you know, I, I kind of felt like I was I was supposed to go there. And in the end, he makes the decision to come here to Notre Dame. And here he is on uh, opening night with Texas in town. Pretty special. Well, as a youngster, he always had Notre Dame in his eye for whatever reason it was. And now that he is here, he really was looking forward to this matchup. And he wanted to perform, and he would love to have a touchdown tonight somehow down in the red zone. He had a countdown clock. He's been eyeing it for what since the spring yeah, i think he from 262 days away durham smythe has been looking forward to this got to know the players when he committed in fact he's was good friends with nation hughes the guy that's been pretty active on the other side of the line for texas third down and six kind of a rough fake there to carlisle as zaire keeps it He's marked short of the first down. That'll bring up fourth down and short. And then there's Nashon Hughes along with Malik Jefferson there. And so here comes Justin Yoon for Notre Dame to attempt the first field goal of his career. Rated the number one kicker in the country. Grew up playing hockey in South Korea. And here he is with his first field goal attempt for Notre Dame and again Kyle Brinza the most prolific kicker in Notre Dame history has moved on to the NFL so it'll be a 38 yarder for Justin Yoon to begin his Notre Dame career and he's right through the middle sat out most of his senior year in high school with an injury but he was pretty much automatic in spring drills and is here tonight so far Tomorrow, looking forward to getting back to TPC Boston for the Deutsche Bank Championship. And look who is attending his very first game at Notre Dame. Ben Crenshaw, the two-time Masters champion and three-time NCAA champion at Texas. Enjoying the game with his wife, Julie. Had a chance to talk with Ben yesterday. He said, I am all cranked up for this game. I don't know how excited he is right now, trailing 17 to nothing, but... Lots of Notre Dame alums and fans from around the country taking advantage of a rare appearance by the burnt orange of Texas at Notre Dame Stadium. Tyler Newsom kicking it off for Notre Dame as DeJay Johnson awaits at the two. He's going to bring it out. Oh, he 
slam back at the 15. Just a vicious hit by Matthias Farley, a part of that more veteran-like special teams that Brian Kelly promised. The, the team with so much depth wanted to use him without fearing too much injury. Well, there is Tyrone Swoops from a tiny town in White Wright, Texas. It is right out of Friday Night Lights there on the border there. Population 1,600. And there is a look at the thriving metropolis of Main Street downtown. There's a look at the stadium where Tyrone played in. And that is the entire football team. Yep. Graduating class of 40. And that guy kind of stands out, doesn't he? Number one, Tyrone Swoops. His senior year, his high school team went one and nine. Nevertheless, he said he went to camps, got noticed, and here he is at Texas. So they had a penalty on the kick against Drew Tranquil. And so they're going to re-kick and we'll give Texas another chance. But uh, Swoops, very soft-spoken guy, Doug, almost shy in stark contrast to Hurd as the offsides penalty will force Notre Dame to kick it again. But he kind of, he wants something to prove. He wants to prove to, he told us, his family and all of his Texas teammates that he can be the quarterback at Texas. No one caught more heat last year in the 6-7 and seven season than Tyrone Swoops did and the criticism in, in Austin can, can, can be pretty harsh well that soft-spoken demeanor worked against them when things went bad they looked at him as maybe not a leader I think the competition for the quarterback spot has brought an edge to him and made him tougher mentally tougher and he had something to prove and he did it throughout fall camp and the Texas got blown out by Arkansas in the bowl game there were more than a few Texas fans that thought that would be the final game for Tyrone Swoops but here he is and there is DJ Johnson bringing it out across the 20 close to the 25 yard line before Kavari Russell yes Kavari Russell on the special teams unit for Notre Dame makes the spot the stop talk about being happy to be back a full 616 days since his last game competing for Notre Dame is Kavari Russell, who of course was a part of the five players who were academically ineligible last season. And Kavari, very emotional, talked with us yesterday telling us that I was the only guy to make it back through the fire and be here. He's proud of what he's done. You can see how back. grateful he is to have this second chance and this opportunity to come back and be a leader on this team. And here is Tyrone Swoops. And again, it's a good game to DeJay Johnson. Give us a chance to see those big game capabilities. Gain a close to 10 for Johnson. So second down, just short of the first down. Swoops feeling the pressure, steps up and down he goes. That was Isaac Rochelle and Sheldon Day right in his grill. Just a race to the quarterback coming from the outside by Rochelle. Sheldon Day just throws his man to the side and gets to the quarterback. This is a talented defensive line. You're not going to have time to throw the football. You just drop back and set up. Third and nine. Low snap, Swoops able to handle it, steps up, avoids the pressure, and is smacked hard by Jalen Smith. Fourth down, Texas to punt. While Swoops is an effective runner north and south, he does a nice job of stepping up through off a stunt. We were talking about this the other day. Sometimes Notre Dame stunts themselves out of lanes and leaves openings. Swoops in the open field. Boom, Jalen Smith tracks him down. And if you think Jalen Smith looks even more physical and imposing this year than last year, he is. He gained 12 pounds. He's now at 240. And just brought Swoops to the ground in a hurry. And Swoops is no small quarterback at 6'4", close to 250. So Texas forced upon again. Notre Dame takes over with just under six minutes left in the opening half, leading 17 to nothing. 
talked about the embarrassing loss by Texas in the bowl game last year. Notre Dame was in stark contrast to that, Doug, the impressive win over LSU in the Music City Bowl. And how big was that carrying over into the season for Brian Kelly? Well, if they don't win that game, they lose their last five straight with no momentum. But Zaire took over the starting quarterback job in that game, and it led into this season. And he leaves off this series. Will Fuller looked like he was out of bounds, and he was. John Bonney, the freshman corner, was with the speedster Fuller, who had the most prolific sophomore receiving year in Notre Dame history. Last year, with those 15 touchdown catches, more than 1,000 yards receiving. It looks like that toe's on the ground. It's whether the toe came off the ground before the reception. And we're moving on. Second down and 10. And here come the whistles to stop it. <laughs> Maybe not. The ruling on the field was an incomplete pass. The previous play is under further review. And there you go, on cue. It's really close as to whether he had possession of the ball before that toe leaves the turf. Can't really tell from that angle. But this is the angle. There's no doubt it's in the field of play. When this possession happened, his toe is still on the ground. That may be overturned. It has to be conclusive. Indisputable no doubt. video evidence it has to be. So that call on the field so important. Ruling out of bounds for Fuller. It's going to have to be very clear that the ball was caught and he had the toe in. So. But Will Fuller saying to Malik Zaire, I'm wide open. Just and stick there, it in my chest. And there's a unique view. For the first time, we are able to have a camera in there with the replay official to kind of see him review. And this is exactly what they are looking at right now. Maybe not in that fast of speed, but they're backing it up, taking a closer look. Try to find that perfect spot where the toe is leaving the ground. Can't tell there whether he's dragging his toe or not from that angle. It looked like from that angle, it looked like the toe was in the air. Because you will see the little pellets moving as his toe is still dragging on the ground. Once the pellets stop, the toe's off the ground. Close. <laughs> Indis Indis indisputable? Right. Indisputable? Not indisputable. I don't, I don't think so. So they continue to wait. By the way, Fuller in those 76 receptions last year, 51 of them were either for a first down or a touchdown. And our own Heinz Ward kind of nicknamed him Big Play Will Fuller, and that's one of the reasons why. He does an exceptional job, not just blown by people with his speed, but catching those wide receiver screens out in the flat and with no fear ducking up under the tunnel screens and running into the mix. He had a lot of his touchdowns as blitz control. When, when a blitz would happen, the quarterback would just pull off, throw it out there to him, and he would make something happen on his own in traffic. Well, they're taking a hard, close look at this one. After further review, the receiver got his left foot inbounds. It is a catch. It's first and 10 at the 48-yard line. What do we know? Well, I believe he definitely had it on the ground, but I didn't think it was that conclusive. Well, in is the it? end, it's a gain of 13 for Fuller and a first down for Notre Dame. So chalk up another first down reception for Will Fuller. You wonder if he's going to be able to keep those big numbers this season with all the receivers that Molly Zaire has at his disposal, but Fuller certainly the most dangerous. And they keep it on the ground up the middle, and this is Josh Adams who ran for the touchdown earlier in the game. The freshman who on his first carry took it in for Pater. Gain a seven there for Adams, who is a big type of back, six feet two, 212 pounds. Second and three for Notre Dame, which has got some tempo going here now. And bammed in the back is Wally Jefferson on Adams. And there's an example 
of that athletic ability by Jefferson, a freshman from Mesquite, Texas. Boy, he just comes around from the left edge and runs the play down from behind. That's just pure athleticism and anticipation of where the ball is going. It could be a play action. It could be a boot. He probably has bootleg responsibility, but he sells out to chase down the line of scrimmage. Malik Jefferson, an early enrollee on the Texas campus, and the Texas defensive coach is Celis Looks, he kind of comports himself like he's been there for a couple of years. He's gone from 217 to 240 in a short stint in Austin. Zaire scrambling for the first down and more. And just sliding out of bounds all the way down for a gain of 14. If you want to just four-man rush Malik Zaire, he will hold on the ball as long as he wants to. Just a little slide step under control, not a panic run out of the pocket. Just a little slide step, and now he's running out of bounds to avoid taking too many hits. What were the words of Longhorn defensive coordinator Vance Bedford on Zaire? He said he's a running back with a pretty good arm, and he's not going to really change who he is. Procise to the 30. Paul Boyette Jr. One of the defensive line for Texas on the stop. Gain of four. Procise is getting a little more work than he really wanted to the bargain for coming into his first game as a running back when he has been at the wide receiver position. Ninth carry, 31 yards for Procise again. Folson has been out of the game since the first quarter. Texas takes its first time out of the half. Media timeout. So timeout on the field. Texas down 17-0. Talking things over when we come back to South Bend. Coming up, it's the Discover Card Halftime Report. Jimmy Roberts in our NBC studio. He's got all the scores, highlights from this first Saturday in college football. Plus, we've got Liam McHugh, Heinz Ward, Jonathan Vilma down on the field. And there they are making their way to the Discover Card Halftime Report position. You miss your guys, uh, Doug? I kind of do. <laughs> I kind of do. I'm going to run down and do halftime with them, and I'll be back a little later. How's that? Um, you better be quick. They're going to break <laughs> down the first half. We'll have a report also from our NASCAR team on Throwback Weekend at Darlington. It's all coming up on the Discover Card Halftime Report. And Notre Dame inside the Longhorn 30 is Malik Zaire. Continues to be a part of this rushing attack. Okay, you run out of bounds in the open field where you can pick up an extra five. But if you're running up the middle, he jumps in the air, leaves his feet. I think Brian Kelly may have a little discussion about that. There's the line for Zaire. Six rushes, 28 yards. Again, without Fulston, who left with an injury six minutes into the game with just three carries. Procise and Zaire have been pretty much the running attack outside of that. Third and four, passing down. Zaire's going to go down at the 40. And knifing in was Bryce Cottrell along with Peter Jenkins. It's to the blind side of Malik Zaire, the unblocked rusher. Coming from the left side of your screen, he sees him a little late, is indecisive about making a move. Great play. Nice tackle. It's hard. I, I tell you, he's very elusive. Zaire almost stayed up. What did the Texas defense tell us? They wanted to move him to his right side so he'd have to throw across his body. Flush him to the right. Left-handed passer, and he really does throw the ball exceptionally well to his left and not as well to his right. Newsom with the punt. He's trying to pin back Texas. It's DeJay Johnson who comes up and makes the catch at the 18-yard line. 204 remaining Texas being shut out 17 to nothing. It's the second head coaching stint for the very well respected Charlie Strong who led Louisville to those four straight bowl games and had a very impressive record in his final two years there. The Charlie Strong coaching stops include one here at Notre Dame where he's a part of the defensive line coaching staff. And then he was a part of Urban Meyer's two national championships at Florida as an assistant coach. And then it was on for his first head coaching job, going 23-3 and in the last two seasons before getting the call to lead Texas. And so Tyrone Swoops and Charlie Strong find themselves down 17 to nothing. 
final two minutes of the opening half. As Swoops begins this from the 18. Steps up, decides to run it, dives his way close to the 25. So if you're Charlie Strong, Doug, how do you bring this, this program back? I mean, it's got all the loyal supporters that you could ask for, but it's going to be a challenge here in the first couple of years. He's created a mindset, a work ethic. He's tired of the I've arrived attitude that once you get a scholarship to the University of Texas, that you're, you've already accomplished something. No, you, you haven't accomplished anything when you arrive. You build on it once you get there. He showed his team clips of Notre Dame football teams of the past to try to get him ready for this atmosphere. He said he didn't want his young team coming into Notre Dame Stadium for the first time and kind of having to deal with all this history and tradition. But now they're really on their heels, although they get a good game here from DeJay Johnson, who showed signs of breaking another big play. He's had huge runs for touchdowns on the ground. The punt return for a touchdown of 80-plus yards in his career. That one good for 21. The action of the back swinging out to the right drew the entire defense out of the middle of the field and allowed that to happen. Maybe Texas can get on the board before the first half expires. And here's Swoop spinning his way to midfield for a gain of five. Second down and five. Jalen Smith brings him down. Two-minute situation, only a minute 13 on the clock, and running a score before the half would be huge for Texas. And a chance for Texas to kind of run this hurry-up tempo. Swoops has pressure from behind. Sheldon Day had him out the cleats. Sheldon Day came all the way around the outside in the loop to run the quarterback down from behind, showing his athleticism, a little speed and quickness as well. Boy, Sheldon Day can stay healthy for Notre Dame. Sky is the limit. And a knee injury last year, high ankle sprain as well. Before that, here is Foreman looking for some room, but just losing ground. Shoemate and company drag him down for a big loss. With 45 seconds on the clock, loss of 12. Not going too right for Charlie Strong and company right now. Boy, you're out near midfield, 45 seconds left in the half. Personal foul, face mask, defense, number 12. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot, automatic, first down. So that's what Devin a Butler. a huge penalty. Yeah, that's that's 22, 22. Shoe made. It was called on 12 Devin Butler there. You see who was not even close to it But that That's a 30-yard difference Yeah, you could give Texas a little hope here before the half Even worse swoops into the middle incomplete and bring up second down clock stop with 31 seconds left He was going for John Burt the impressive Redshirt freshman from Tallahassee, Florida. Jonathan Gray on the as the back coming left to right. Nice cut on the blitz pickup. Step in there and turn that loose. You had a shot at a post route for a touchdown. Swoops floating it down the sideline and on the coverage was Cole Luke. Incomplete. He won it Foreman. A lot of contact going on while the ball's in the air. Yeah, Luke made the grab, but he was clearly out of bounds. No doubt that he was out of bounds. He plays the ball extremely well in the air. He got a little physical with the receiver downfield. He, the contact downfield will get called. So it's third and ten. Swoops has pressure, avoids it, steps up inside the 35. That'll bring up fourth down. Clock is running past the 10 second mark. Jalen Smith on the stop. And Strong finally calls a timeout with four seconds left. Well, it's a fourth down play, so you want.
Now time for the game update presented by Sprint. And it was Malik Zaire and the Notre Dame Fighting Irish getting on the board first in the first quarter with a strike to Will Fuller to make it 7 to nothing. You see the numbers on Zaire. They lost Bolston in that first quarter with his right leg wrapped up. Notre Dame defense has made its presence known on Swoops and Gerard Hurd. They added another touchdown by Josh Adams, a 38-yard field goal by Justin Yoon, and that adds up to the 17-0 advantage for the Irish. Jalen Smith lining up at the defensive end position. This time he drops out and spies the quarterback, comes up, makes an open field tackle. Well, this is a 52-yard attempt by Nick Rose. His career long came in his duties last year of 51. And a timeout is called by Notre Dame with one second. Prior to the snap, timeout, Notre Dame. That's her second, 30 seconds in duration. So they bring it all the way down to one second, and Brian Kelly says, we're going to make him do this again. Going back to that last play, having a guy like Jalen Smith be your spy guy on athletic quarterbacks allows your pass rush to free up and just go after the quarterback and not worry about contained or rush lanes because Jalen Smith will cover the entire middle of the field and track the runner down. Everybody's All-American Jalen Smith. In the words of... Defensive coordinator Brian Van Gorder, they say they would be shocked if he doesn't have a great season. Poised to really make his name known across the country even more. And now another timeout from 52 yards. Nick Rose showing some good leg here. Notre Dame takes his third and final timeout of the half. Talk about ice. Well, it went through. Nick Rose is does frozen solid now. Does does the leg get tired? Do you lose a little pop in the leg, kicking 50 plus yarders three times in a row? Back to back timeouts by Brian Kelly. But what if he misses that one? You're, you're rolling dice as to which one he will miss. Now, you're just getting in his head a little bit, making him thinking about the long kick. He's nailed it two times in a row. I, that would give me confidence as a kicker. Yeah? I hit it twice. I hit it third time. Both attempts so far would have been good and would have given Nick Rose a new career long. So can he do it three times in a row? If you can do it once, you can do it again. <laughs> Plenty of leg, but this one is wide left. So in the end, the two timeouts burned by Brian Kelly and Notre Dame work in the end. And Texas is shut out in the first half. Everything looked good. Just pulled a bit by Rose on the little, third and final attempt. Little pull with a draw and goes wide left. So you can call back-to-back -back timeouts like that in college, as Brian Kelly just did. And Nick Rose, who connected in the first two attempts, still not able to get his team on the board. Halftime here with Notre Dame leading 17 to nothing. Stay tuned for the Discover Card halftime report as we send you to Jimmy Roberts and our NBC studio. A one-of-a-kind, passionate person who touched thousands of lives, not only here on campus, but around the world. And the players honoring Father Ted Hesburgh this season with a decal on the back of their helmets. Father Ted, in the hearts of this university forever. And such a huge, obvious fan of this Notre Dame football team. And the Irish making Father Ted proud tonight with a 17-0 lead at halftime over the Texas Longhorns at sold-out Notre Dame Stadium. The Irish ranked 11th in the country. Double-digit favorite, about 10-point favorite right now, leading by 17, which leads us to our first-half stats, powered by Coke Zero. Anything stand out there, uh, Doug, for you other than the score? Just the efficiency in the passing game for Notre Dame and Malik Zaire. 
defensively. Notre Dame has shut down Texas. The two first downs Texas had was with Gerard Hurd at quarterback. Duke Thomas takes the Newsom kickoff and drags the Notre Dame special teams unit close to the 25-yard line. James Onawala with a special teams tackle. Let's send it down to Catherine. All right, Dan, I spoke to Brian Kelly and asked him to assess the play of his quarterback, Malik Zaire. He said he thought he played pretty well, but there were a couple of things he wanted to talk to him about at the half, specifically a couple of looks that Texas gave him, which he wasn't expecting. He thought Zaire handled himself well, though. Defensively, he liked his team's ability to stop the run and contain swoops. He singled out Jalen Smith and his presence all around the ball. As for an update on Tarion Folston, he said it is a knee injury, Dan. All right, thank you, Catherine. Tyrone Swoop starts at quarterback for Texas to begin this second half. We did see Gerard Hurd, but it was very sparingly in the first half. And Swoops begins with a give to Jonathan Gray. Gray, the second leading rusher for Texas in the first half, but still he's only got 22 yards for the game. Leading rusher so far for the Longhorns is Swoops with 26. Well, I think the approach has to be run the ball and quick rhythm passing. Get it out of your hands quickly. Gets out of Swoop Sands early, and it did not take long for Elijah Shoemate to bring down DeJay Johnson. Shoemate just reacts up instinctively, sees this happening in the slot, number 22, right? They, they don't have numbers out there. That ball should not be thrown. It should be run, run up the middle or run your zone read. Don't pull the trigger. So the Notre Dame defense, which was so maligned last year, decimated by injuries down the stretch of the season, is having a good night tonight. Shoemate with his third tackle of the evening brings up third and nine. And Swoops just throwing it away. More on that Notre Dame defense, Doug. You've got Jalen Smith, obviously the, the real cog for it. But then you've got guys like Joe Schmidt back. You've got Kavari Russell back for defensive coordinator Brian Van Gorder. And again, there was a lot of things happening last year. But the injuries just killed this team down the stretch, especially when they lost Schmidt, who makes all the calls there. In a complicated defense, when you lead, lose your leadership and your communicators on the field, you're in trouble. Everyone is back. They're taught. It's the second year of a system. They all know what's going on, and they're talking both in the back end and up front. Wow, what a punt by Michael Dixon, which since C.J. Sanders back in Texas was there on top of him. 57-yard punt by the former Australian rules football player. And C.J. Sanders got hammered there, and they were able to recover it. That was Tory Hunter who was able to grab the Sanders misplay. Well, he should be fair catching this ball, but he's probably a little too nervous at the late instant to put that hand up, so he goes for the catch, and the timing by Boyd was perfect. Chris Boyd, one of those freshmen on Texas' side. There's Folston on crutches coming back out to the Notre Dame sideline. So Procise is in there next to Zaire. Leading rusher for Notre Dame in the first half at 31 yards. Fake it to him over the middle. Carlisle all the way inside the 40, across the 40. Jason Hall ran him down, but a big strike of 26. Slot receiver on the best defender. Duke Thomas just lets him go off the play action. The play action fake drew the linebackers up, allowed the big window behind the linebacker level. Counting eight different receivers with receptions for Notre Dame, and Carlisle leading the way in yardage with three for 55. Grosseis, another first down, and it's becoming more apparent, Doug, that this Notre Dame offensive front is just moving all sorts of Longhorns. First of all, they blow the play open at the point of attack, and he goes north-south. The entire offensive line is 20 yards downfield at the end of the run. It was a great block by McGoochie at the point of attack. Elmer's downfield. The entire offensive line comes to the aid of the run. Look at that. And that was the story in the bowl game against LSU. Physical SEC team. And that kind of got the belief going for Notre Dame, and especially those guys up front for Harry Heastan, that they could dominate overpower defensive fronts. And that's what we're seeing here tonight on Texas. Process with a carry. Well, Ronnie Stanley reiterated that. He was like, we finally have a group here where we can dominate the line of scrimmage and run the football. 
And in, in bad weather conditions, in games where a quarterback may be a little nervous or jittery and things aren't happening for you, you can always rely on the run game. Procise up the middle for a first down. One of the biggest things to happen positively for Brian Kelly in the offseason was just Ronnie Stanley staying at Notre Dame. He is projected as a very high first round draft pick in the NFL. In fact, Harry Heaston, who you see there, the offensive line coach, and Jack Swarbrook, the athletic director, Brian Kelly had an actual intervention with Stanley at his home in Las Vegas to convince him of the advantages of staying at Notre Dame. And in the end, Stanley has stayed. And Procise has benefited from that as well. Another gain of eight. When your athletic, athletic director makes that trip, you know it's, an, it's a re-recruitment of the individual. And Stanley told us he'd made his mind up. He was gone. He was going. And so that intervention, if you will, didn't Zach Martin get a hold of him? Zach too? Martin, Nick Martin's brother, who obviously has done great things in his rookie year with the Cowboys. There's Swarbrick looking on. Made a phone call to Stanley to help coerce him as well into staying. Zaire is going to lose a lot as Duke Thomas ran well, out. The freshman tailback went the wrong way and left his quarterback hanging this time. Ronnie Stanley so athletic. Part of state championship basketball team in his high school days at Bishop Gordon. Gorman in Las Vegas. And he was taking passes from Malik Zaire after practice as we watched in the final full practice at Notre Dame Stadium here the other night. Soft hands, doesn't it? Third and nine, Zaire to Fuller. And right away, it's Duke Thomas. There's one guy who's the heart and soul of that defense. It would have to be Thomas and Doug. We were talking earlier. You think it, as far as NFL ability goes right now, Duke Thomas seems a guy that, for them, that could play to the next level. No doubt about that. But again, there's no numbers here when you're throwing this wide receiver screen. It was two on two, so there's no one to block Thomas. And it's a great job by Will Fuller just hanging on to the football. And that's going to bring out the young freshman, Justin Yoon, who connected earlier in the first half in 38 yards. And this is going to be a 45-yard attempt for Yoon. Who has this meticulous routine of blocking everything out. This one had it left, and it is wide left. So Justin Yoon misses from 45. And with 10 minutes left in the third, Notre Dame remains on top, 17 to nothing. Watching Notre Dame football on NBC, presented by Coke Zero. Tyrone Swoops still at the controls for Texas. And Chris Warren is in the backfield. They fake it to him, and Swoops going deep down the middle for John Burt, who can fly. And it is complete. So Texas, with finally something to cheer about, wakes up a little bit of that burnt orange around Notre Dame Stadium. Well, Swoops finally had time to throw the ball. It was a hard play action, and he turned that one loose. He throws the deep ball extremely well. Just a freshman, Burt, with a gain of 48. It's all the way down to the Notre Dame 24. And here is Chris Warren, who gets his first carry of the game. They may have lined up quickly to because the whether or not it was a clean catch or not. I mean, he just out throws the coverage. He really wasn't open and took off after the ball. Burt, 6'2", 184 Bert. pounds, impressive player. Burt definitely pulled that in, too, and, and grasped the ball. It never touched the ground. Great job by Burt. He, he's a specimen now. He's a big boy, runs fast. He's one of those kind of guys. He can be one-on-one. -on -one. You can throw the jump ball, too. He can make big plays for you. He, is the replacement for what they had in John Harris last year. He reminds Sean Watson, Texas's assistant head coach for the offense, of Devontae Parker when he was at Louisville. That's what he told us. And so Burt, with his one catch, a big one of 48 yards, but now it's third and seven. Swoops has time, is a little high on the throw, and Foreman is unable to hang on. He was open, he just missed him. Had a play. He had a play. Foreman dragging underneath. Coverage had drifted deep. 
inaccurate with the flow, with, with the throw, without pressure on his face. He has time to stand pat. Nice patience. Wait for him to come across. He could go out the back door and get some good yardage on that one. So Notre Dame holding Texas to a field goal attempt. Remember Nick Rose, who was iced twice and drilled 252 yarders before missing on his third attempt. This one from 41. And he says, take that, Brian Kelly. You can't ice me here. <laughs> so Texas and the Longhorn faithful and Charlie Strong finally on the board, 17 to 3. NBC. And so far on. In this game, we've seen some pretty extraordinary abilities from the prize recruit for Texas, Malik Jefferson, Doug. He's an athlete with a motor that won't quit. He gets after it. When he can be put in positions where he can just be an athlete and not have to think right now because he's young and just turn him loose, he's making plays. So he's getting a rest right now as Nick Rose is set to kick off with Texas finally on the board, trailing it by two touchdowns. Carlisle awaits and it looked like he was going to take an E, but out he comes and he is taken down no further than the 10 yard line. So should have taken a knee in hindsight. Chris Boyd, the freshman there, celebrating again. Special teams for Texas. Well, back to Malik Jefferson and some of the evidence of how good a player he can be, Doug. Boy, when you put him on the edge and just let him rush or just be an athlete in space. Watch him continue with the effort, second effort, get back into the play, make a tackle. Here he uses his instincts to backdoor the block, runs through a gap and makes a play in the backfield, tackle for loss. He's just a pure athlete, instinctive, reads the play quickly and closes down, probably leaving his responsibility to make this play, but nails the back in the backfield. Already has the respect of his Texas teammates as a true freshman. First college game tonight under the lights at Notre Dame. And Jefferson has been one of the highlights. The offense makes a big play through the pass game, sets up a field goal. Notre Dame has dominated, dominated this game for over a half, and it's still only a two-score game, 17-3. to three. All of a sudden on the kickoff, Notre Dame starting deep in their own territory. It's a chance to continue momentum now for the Longhorns if they can come up with a three and out. Well, there's an official review going on. I mentioned that Carlisle looked like he might have taken a knee, and it appears that Charlie Strong is wondering the same thing when he kind of... Well, you know, if you're Charlie Strong, himself. you don't want him taking that knee because the ball comes out to the 20. Right. And he did not touch. You cannot simulate going down as a rule in college football. So that would be a dead ball, bring it out to the 20. After further review, Reefley was looking at whether the runner's knee was down in the end zone. It was not. Be first and 10 at the 10 yard line. Well, it definitely did not touch the ground, but he definitely did simulate or try to, what but again, would be inferred but again, as if you're Charlie fake. Strong, I mean, you don't want that call. I don't know what you'd really be arguing that for because it's at the 10. Yeah, Instead, it, it, if that knee touches the ground, it's out to the 20-yard line. Charlie Strong trying to bring his team back. They did get on the board with a field goal to cut the deficit to 14, and they do have the Irish pinned back deep in their own territory. Forsyth with another carry. That is his 13th carry of the game. Shiro Davis on the stop of Procise. 72 yards now for C.J. Procise. You can feel this defense gain a little momentum over, over the offense, coming up with a big play. and That took that one big play by Burt, and it has really changed the feel of the game. I mean, well, all of a sudden, everyone looks up at the scoreboard and says, hey, it's only a two-score game. I know Notre Dame has been dominating the game, but it's only two scores. A three and out in your own end, get the ball near midfield. You're back in business. Vance Bedford, the defensive coordinator for Texas, looking for a big stop here on second and seven. And whistles come in and stop this play. Notre Dame, Notre Dame took a timeout.
Well, Doug, as we look down the stretch of the back half of this third quarter and into the fourth quarter, we mentioned we felt a little bit of a momentum exchange there, but uh, it doesn't appear, though, that Texas really has the firepower, especially in the close of the first half with Notre Dame blowing them off the football. But if they can get a little bit of change of heart, who knows what Charlie Strong's team can do tonight. Well, the forte for Notre Dame so far has been the offensive line and power of football. But offensively, Texas has to come up with some answers. Get the ball out of Swoop's hands whenever possible. When you take those deep shots, Max protect it so he can hang on once in a while and take a shot down the field. But you've got to stay in down and distance on offense, have some kind of running game. And if you get good field position off of this, it's a ball game. Surprised we have not seen more of Gerard Hurd for Texas. Second down and seven. Take it to Procise, and here it goes Zaire the other way, looking for the first down marker. Dylan Haynes, the former walk-on, ran Zaire out. And he is just short of the first down, it appears. It re really looked to me like Zaire made a poor decision on that and just outran the defense to get to the corner and gain yardage. Haynes is a heck of a story. He's a guy, Haynes is a guy that I can really relate to. <laughs> he's, he's on scout team. Nobody knows his name. He works himself into the lineup somehow, some way. Story is so similar to Notre Dame's Joe Schmidt. If you're familiar with that story, a walk-on who didn't get a scholarship out of high school. So Dylan walked on at Texas where his dad played, almost gave up. There's Joe Schmidt on the other sideline who has worked his way into a captain's position for Notre Dame. Almost left the program, and then they had Charlie Strong come in for Mac Brown, kind of opened up competition, and Dylan Haynes worked his way back up the depth chart, and here he is, a starter. Where his dad played as a defensive lineman for Texas. C.J. Prosais looking for more first down yardage and dragging the pile across the 30. Duke Thomas, a part of Texas, that couldn't bring him down. He had 12 for Prosais. And he's inching closer to a 100-yard game here. That's the right side of the offensive line. I mean, this is easy. This is just too easy. Crosice is just carrying the ball. He's downfield 5 to 10 yards before he gets any any defensive player at all. Now look at McGlinchey out there. Number 68, 6 foot 8. You've got him standing next to Elmer, 6'5. And then you got Ronnie Stanley on the left side, 6'6. Six, six. Quentin Nelson, 6'4. And Nick Martin is center anchoring things in the middle. Another first down. Why not give it back to Procise? But this time he is met for a Procise. short game. So Procise, the workhorse in the running game for Notre Dame. Tonight is 16th carry, Doug, with Folston again out of the lineup. Loser, leading rusher, six minutes into the game. And an area that Folston is extremely strong is pass protection. That hasn't been an issue tonight, but with a blitzing team that gets in your face, having a wide receiver back in the backfield or a young freshman in this instance can be an issue when you're picking up uh, blitz pickups. Pro size taking a breather. Josh Adams, the freshman who scored earlier in the game in the backfield. They fake it to him. And Zaire going deep down the field. Will Fuller wide open. Touchdown, Notre Dame. Big play, Will Fuller strikes again for 66 yards this time. Hard play action to the left. Zaire looks left and then comes back right. Buying all kinds of time, had all kinds of time to stand there, let this develop. This is a bust in coverage. Haynes is over the top. Thomas thinks he has the short flat. There's no one in the deep third over there. And Will Fuller actually almost stopped running, just kind of trotting down the field until he saw the ball in the air. That's who Texas was worried about along with Malik Zaire was that speed by Fuller. Yoon comes on to provide the extra point and all of a sudden it's 24-3 and all of a sudden that momentum that Texas might have had is gone with Will Fuller's second touchdown catch of the game. Had one earlier in the first quarter. Adds another one here in the third quarter. Busted secondary for Texas and Will Fuller takes advantage. Off weekend begins Thursday at 7.30 Eastern Time on NBC. So 
Your old teammate Tom Brady after all is back on the field for the Super Bowl champs Doug. Don't give Tom re Tom a reason Tom Brady a reason to get mad. All right. He's good enough. Now he's got a reason to go kick somebody's tail and turn it up another notch. And Tom can do it. Thursday night, the kickoff opener right here on NBC. Tyler Newsom was coming up to put it in play and then is held back. So the Irish pulling away a bit here in the 21 point lead with 550 left in the third quarter. Texas is going to stay in this. They got to put together drive starting right now. The Jake Johnson trying to put together a good return. Kind of runs into the back of his own teammate there. And Johnson and Texas will put it in play at the 19, just short of the 20. Trailing 24 to 3. Well, in order to go downfield with the football, you need to be able to hold on to the ball, step into your throw, and turn it loose. Pass protection is the key. Here's Stanley on Ridgeway. Perfect form, knees bent, staying in great position, great basketball feet from his basketball days to stay in front of his defender. And that's maybe Will Fuller's easiest touchdown. I think uh, Zaire's a little pumped. He's running all the way down. To congratulate Fuller on a second touchdown catch of the night. Here is DeJay Johnson, the ever dangerous one, gets wrapped up again with his own teammate there. That was Connor Williams, the freshman tackle, who he kind of got tangled up with. Johnson can be explosive. Get him in the open field, find a crease. He's a guy that can take it 80. Johnson, a former running back. Now part of the wide receiving core for Texas on second down and seven. And on the ground is Jonathan Gray. Jonathan Gray with just his fourth carry of the game. Drew Tranquil on the stop of Gray. Was really anticipating Gray having a lot of carries tonight, carrying the ball to the load. But because of down and distance, they haven't been in a situation, Texas, where they could just pound the football. Big play here for Texas to try to keep this drive alive on third and two, and they'll entrust to Jay Johnson, who's going backwards. Maybe not the time to take that tactic. Loss of five, and Texas will be forced to punt. There is a flag as you look into the wild eyes of defensive coordinator Brian Van Quarter. <laughs> He's emotional, but he gives you some good highlights on replay. In his second season, we talked about Notre Dame. <laughs> Look at those eyes. After the play, personal foul, offense, number 66. Half the distance of the goal, fourth down. Called on Cedric Flowers. See him coming to the frame late here, coming from the left, and bang, after the fact. Not a big blow. Oh, oh there's the there's where the flag is on Redfield. Smack him in the face mask. It's always that kind of last guy to retaliate, right? So Michael Dixon punting deep in his own territory to C.J. Sanders, who backpedals and will give Notre Dame excellent field position. Notre Dame up. 24 to 3. Eleventh rank Notre Dame looking to start off its 127th season in college football with a win over Texas, which is in its 123rd season. 882 wins for Notre Dame in its story program, 881 for Texas. Only Michigan has more. And Notre Dame looking to pick up another one. And a nice grab there by Chris Brown for the first down for the Irish. Nice touch on the throw to lay it up and over. But Dylan Haynes actually slips and could have broken on this ball. Dylan Haynes was running up the field. Here comes Chris Brown across, and he slips. Otherwise, there might have been a big collision.
There is Haynes taking full advantage of his incredible story, working his way into the starting lineup. Under four minutes left here in the third quarter. On the ground is Carlisle. Slips and falls and loses a yard. There's a guy that may get back into the mix carrying the football out of the backfield with injuries. Former running back, moved the slot receiver, did an outstanding job last year as a slot receiver catching the ball down the field. I thought he transitioned extremely well. He may be the alternative to have a few extra carries. There's the freshman Josh Adams in behind Zaire on second down and 11. And they give it to Adams. Notre Dame kind of in that mode of eating up time and just letting that big offensive line go to work. Yeah, Luatua was on the end, the extra tight end, and just secured the corner and made it an easy jaunt to the sideline for good yard. Gain of six for Josh Adams, and who knows, we might see Dexter Williams, another freshman running back that Brian Kelly has available and said would have a chance to play tonight. But so far, Josh Adams... The freshman to get the work here. Four carries, 23 yards in his Notre Dame debut. And third and six. Irish at the Longhorn, 36. Zaire steps up and wide open at the 25-yard line for a first down as Torrey Hunter. Talked about how his career at Notre Dame got up to a terrible and healthy start. Broke his leg in an all-star game, and then he had the groin injury last season. Doug, this is really the first time that he has been able to be healthy to start the season. Of course, the son of the Major League Baseball star, Torrey Sr., who you, you can relate to this, is 40 years old and still playing in the major leagues in his 19th year now for the Minnesota Twins. Bless him. I love it. I love it. Play to your 50. Keep going. Make him pull you, that uniform off you. You got three bunched up to the left, and they keep it up the middle, and this is Josh Adams is going to score again for Notre Dame. This time from 25 yards out. There's no cut here. This is straight north-south off the zone read. Zaire reads it perfectly. Josh, Josh Adams takes the handoff and goes north and south. Great job getting up field by Nick Martin. Get it up to the linebacker level. With Folston on the sidelines, this could be a very important night for Josh Adams to get some real game playing time in anticipation of a Notre Dame schedule that is going to get rough and going to test the Irish here coming up. Justin Yoon knocks it through, and Notre Dame all of a sudden, with two minutes left in the third quarter, has a 31-3 lead. Josh Adams, the latest to score, and the freshman with two touchdowns. Irish fans happy about the score with two minutes left in the third, 31-3 Irish. And how about the night that Malik Zaire is having, Doug? 16 of 18, 257 yards, two touchdowns. But based on what happened last year with Everett Golson, even more impressive, no turnovers, zero interceptions, zero fumbles. And that was what plagued that Notre Dame offense last year. He's very sure of what he's doing with the ball. And the fact that he's getting great pass protection allows him to step into his throws and be very accurate. This is Ryan Newsom, a redshirt freshman on the return for Texas, bringing it up close to the 25-yard line. So Zaire on the offense has done his job, and Brian Van Gorder's defense in his second season, and this is not an easy defense to pick up, NFL-style defense, and it really was the tale of two halves of the season last year. Remember when they could do no wrong, giving up just 12 points a game, and then the highest scoring average given up over an eight-game span in Notre Dame history down the stretch. And again, injuries told most of that story. It was all injuries. A lot of young guys, a lot of freshmen having to play last year, similar to what Texas has this year. But with a complicated defense, it became more difficult. They lifted their red shirt off Jay Hayes at the end of the year. Just that bodies to line up. They didn't have any veterans out there that could control it and communicate it. Swoop still pulling at the quarterback position for Texas. 
With under two minutes left in the third, dropping way back, trying to get some time, and down he goes. Romeo Aguara with a sack. More pressure from Van Gorder's defense up front. Loss of 12. Swoops had time to deliver the ball or at least release it and get it out of there. He's got to have a clock in his head that, hey, it's time for this ball to go. Comes off the fake, drifts back, looks downfield. Just turn it loose and throw it out of bounds over a receiver's head. So Texas backed up to its own 12-yard line and just trying to get more cushion out to the 15. Deonta Foreman, the twin brother of wide receiver Amante Foreman with the carry. So you got 33 Foreman and three Foreman. Well, I'll tell you what, the ball carrier Foreman, 33, he's a downhill runner. I think a Chuck Foreman when I hear Foreman, the way he <laughs> runs the football. He'll run through arm tackles, lower his pads, and go. And he just saw his brother then their number three. A little smaller, 5'10", only 204. Deonta goes 241. And Swoops goes close to 250. So they've got some side, they got some athletic talent on this team, but Swoops has flushed out again. He just doesn't have any time to do anything. It looks a little bit like a microcosm of last year when he kind of ran for his life. Well, Drew Tranquil came scot-free on a loop, come up inside. No one picks him up. He flushes Swoops out to his right. Swoops had no chance. And that'll bring up fourth down and Swoops to the sideline with nothing happening there. It was amazing, huh? The, the way the Notre Dame season went last year. I mean, Brian Van Gorder was kind of dubbed a genius. He brought this new NFL style defense to Notre Dame. They went off to a 6 0 start. You know, there was all the Heisman talk about Everett Golson and national championship talk about Notre Dame, and then the air got let out of the balloon. But a different feeling type of season for Brian Kelly. Of course, we were at that practice. It was kind of a pall over practice last year when. Notre Dame and the players all got word that the five players would serve academic suspensions four at first and then a fifth was added and then the injury to Austin Collinsworth so it was uh, really kind of almost a surreal start to the season for Notre Dame last year totally depleted big time players that, that were removed from your roster so many young guys had to play throughout the year after injuries and no one knows more than Brian Kelly that this is the year to make it happen. Zaire pump fakes and then confidently goes downfield and open at the 30 yard line is who else but Will Fuller. Gain of 30 from Zaire to Fuller. So they're running wide receiver screens all day long. Finally, they decide to pump one, suck everyone up. Again, a, the opportunity to reset his feet and go downfield. He had to make the longer throw to the outside, so the ball took a while to get there. So it's not a touchdown. But he had two guys running free. Arm strength wise, you've talked about it when we did the spring game. Zaire's arm is incredibly strong. Oh, he has a snap of the wrist, and that ball is spinning. The revolutions on a windy day cut through the will cut through the wind. He can turn it loose. So the big gain to Fuller brings the third quarter to a conclusion. And Notre Dame in absolute control up 31 to 3. We're back to Notre Dame Stadium after these messages from your NBC local station. You're watching Notre Dame football on NBC. Presented by Coke Zero. Back at Notre Dame Stadium, a look at the score by quarters, powered by Coke Zero. Notre Dame getting on the board early with a one of two touchdown catches by Will Fuller. Josh Adams has added a couple touchdowns of his own, and the Justin Yoon field goal in the second quarter makes it a total of 31 to three. Texas with a lone field goal. But that has been it. Notre Dame has dominated on both sides of the ball, especially up front. And Malik Zaire has been, well, whoops. Ned almost said that they were flawless as far as turnovers go. Pro size able to hang on to it. I mean, these have to be automatic. He's just on the move. The handoff a little slip just before the mesh point. Cause the ball to be on the ground. You're talking about the urgency of the season. And Malik Zaire makes no bones about it. He came out before the season started and told his teammates and the press, this is the year. He says we've got depth across the board. Let's talk about it. Let's get it in everybody's minds in the locker room. And he's not going to shy away. Long way to go to January, though, huh? Second and 15, Zaire stepping up. Incomplete. 
That is just the third incompletion of the night for Zaire. Boy, Eccles is coming off the corner blitz. Looks like he's going to come scot free and deliver a blow. And at the last instant, McGlinchey pops out and gets a piece of him. Takes away a blind side hit on Malik Zaire. So third and 15 now for Zaire. Trying to keep this drive alive. Maybe in the least get it within just a Yoon field goal range. And they're definitely there now as Corey Robinson does a little juggling act before he hauls it in. Gain of 20 for the son of the Admiral, Corey Robinson, who makes his second catch of the night. And uh, had a chance to catch up with uh, Corey's dad, David Robinson, of course, the NBA Hall of Famer. He was on our flight here in the South Bend. There he is in the green shirt, has never missed a game, home or away, watching his son. A junior out of San Antonio, Texas. Of course, with David Robinson starts so many years in the NBA. Big pickup there on third and 15. Corey Robinson sets up Notre Dame at the Texas 16. Procise. Getting more good yardage. Malik Jefferson, the freshman linebacker for Texas, makes the stop. Procise now with 92 yards on the ground. That's just power football. Two tight ends, a balanced up front. Pick a side. Check your run one way or the other and go straight ahead. This is just good old-fashioned pound the ball. Texas just does not have any answers for Perry Heastan's offensive line. You have the impression that if Notre Dame wanted to, they could have done this all night. That's what Brian Kelly told us. He said, if somebody's going to challenge us on the run and not give us maybe some defensive looks that we maybe have to make adjustments at, they're going to have a hard time with us. A flag has been thrown. And that's a pretty nice thing to have in your back pocket is an offensive line that physical that can make people move. Well, we've been having some technical difficulties. There it is. Well, a lot of these runs, the running back, the ball carrier is not getting met until three or four yards on the opposite side of the line of scrimmage. They're, they're getting a great push and reestablishing the line of scrimmage three or four yards downfield. That's not a bad line for your first start at Notre Dame Stadium, is it? Oh, he's, his athleticism allows him to get in open space and make easy throws, and he's doing a great job out of the, in the pocket. So after the illegal procedure penalty, Procise trying to pick a hole on the left side. Speaking of that offensive line and Zaire's kind of relationship to it, what he had to say about it, he says... Uh, the offensive line is the engine, and I am just the shiny paint that kind of <laughs> puts the final touches on it. I think he's got some shiny numbers right yeah. now. He, he really, I'll tell you what, he adds a dimension to this. I mean, the offensive line, Harry Heastan there, does an unbelievable job with them. He's hard on his boys, but he'll defend them to the hilt. And Malik just adds the extra dimension that threatens the perimeter with his feet, that scares you in the from playing man coverage because he can take off and run. A lot of things you hesitate to do because of him at quarterback. Second and goal. Touchdown, Chris Brown. Just total domination by Notre Dame right now. Nothing Charlie Strong can do. Well, it's run, 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 run. Then hard play action. Draw the linebackers up one-on-one. -on -one. Easy touchdown, Chris Brown beats him to the inside with no help to the inside. That's an easy pitch and catch. All set up by the run game and the hard play action. This is looking a lot like it did late down the stretch for Texas last year. The Longhorns are outscored 79 to 17 in their final two games against TCU and then Arkansas in the bowl game. And they're getting hammered again here in the opener as Yoon busts it through and makes it 38 to three. Malik Zaire is the man at Notre Dame and the glare of the spotlight that comes with that position. And so far on opening night, he has been impressive. Left in the opener for Notre Dame in Texas, and it's been all Irish 38 to 3. 
Tyler Newsom sends it into the end zone, and Ryan Newsom is going to come out for Texas. I had a prolific career as a high schooler, returning some seven punt returns for touchdowns. But what a night for Malik Zaire. He is 19 to 22. The running game has been great, so off the play action fix, sets his feet, draws the linebacker level up. Hits it behind it again. Play action fake all day to hang on the ball and go deep downfield for a big play. All this starts with the offensive line. Again, down by the goal line. Play action. Draw the linebacker level up. Easy pitch and catch. Very accurate with the football. Setting his feet and delivering strikes. Tell you what, he was, he was scrutinized so much for the passing. You know, does he is he going to have the touch? Is he going to be able to blend his running abilities with the passing game? And... I know it's early, but he's passed all the tests so far tonight as Chris Warren is stopped down there by the defensive front of Notre Dame. Take a look at our quarterback comparison brought to you by the Lincoln Motor Company and Zaire outnumbering Swoops big time. Well, Swoops has not had a chance. The pass rush has been in his face all night. They can't establish the run to take some pressure off of it. Young offensive line. It's tough to throw when you're on your back. And he's on the run now and just forced to throw it away. So a tough night for Tyrone Swoops, who comes from that tiny town of White Wright, Texas. I mentioned the population, just 1,600. So when he goes into Del Royal Memorial Stadium in Austin, he plays in front of a crowd that is 60 times the size of his own hometown. So Tyrone Swoops in Texas under the bright lights here at Notre Dame. Just not enough to measure up with Notre Dame tonight. That one wanted John Burt, who had the big gain earlier, but he wasn't able to grasp it. Van Gorder just keeps dialing up pressures. Got a twist on the right side. Drew Tranquil came through again. Again, Swoops has people around his legs, hitting him, chasing him, and he can't set his feet and deliver the ball. Talking to the defensive players for Notre Dame, it's such a difference, isn't it, that first year under Brian Van Gorder, they all kind of feel like they're not thinking as much they're just playing more football but it takes a while to grasp that system well the concepts are starting to come through so you understand the entire scheme not just your responsibility cj sanders driven back and then has his helmet knocked off freshman from petersburg virginia actually granada hills california excuse me just under 11 minutes left notre dame by 35. Thank you, Jimmy. So you can see that Malik Zaire, who was battling Golson as late as the spring game and practices, having a much better night than Golson, who we battled for the number one job here before Golson elected to transfer to Florida State. Deshaun Kaiser now in for the Irish quarterback. Last spring, because of that quarterback battle, Kaiser was shortchanged, did not get the reps he needed last spring. He looked shaky when he did get in. This fall, we saw him practice. He looked sharp in the red zone. He's come a long way. He can execute this offense now, but he lost a spring of practice. 6'4", 230 pounds, did not play last season, so making his debut. This is Dexter Williams also making his Notre Dame debut. He mentioned he, along with Josh Adams, are the freshman running backs for the Irish. Dexter, 5'11", 200-pound freshman from Winter Garden, Florida. Also getting a chance to kind of get the game feel before Notre Dame uh, travels to Virginia next week. Well, talking to running back coach Denson, he said Williams has put on about 20 pounds this year, and he is the real deal. He's got some size to him now and can run with authority. So third and short. Kaiser, who Kelly said is ready to go. We feel good that if we got to go to him, He's going to get the job done, grasp the offense, and again has made some quicker strides as of late in the latest practices. Well, the funny part of, of that was when we saw the red zone practice, it happened to be a day that Malik Zaire struggled and didn't throw the ball well or make good decisions, and actually Kaiser had a good day. Then we saw Malik practicing afterwards, practicing those throws he missed, and it paid off. You know, when the lights are on, Malik Zaire is at his best. Here's Dexter Williams again. 
Well, we mentioned Notre Dame traveling to Virginia. It'll be their very first trip ever down to Charlottesville. And then back here in South Bend for a big test against Georgia Tech, which had an easy opener on Thursday night against Alcorn State. And then it's UMass, and then it's at Clemson down there. They're 12th ranked right now. And the rest of the schedule for Notre Dame as you look ahead. That Georgia Tech game is scary. Georgia Tech looked great. They're very efficient running that option football. Always gives Notre Dame fits when they play option teams. Second and five, that is Williams again. By the way, UCLA, a 34 to 16 winner over Virginia, which Notre Dame will travel to a week from today. Got a bunch of wide eyes in the huddle right now <laughs> looking to the sideline young guys that aren't sure quite sure where they're going to be lining up and want some they want some security of a guy next to them to tell them what to do I think Got Alizé Jones out there freshman tight end number 10 standing next to Dexter Williams freshman Boy, are they excited about Alizé Jones huh On third and two, fighting for the first down and getting it is Williams. You talk about Alizé Jones. How about the catch he made in practice, reaching back, one-handed, back over the shoulder. His speed down in the red zone, or his speed in the field, but down the red zone, he is going to be a guy that is a threat down the middle of the field, go up high and get the ball. He can make those one-handed catches or catches in traffic. Although, we, you know, we say all this and he dropped the first ball of the game. This is like a four-man battle for the tight end position. Durham Smythe started the game, but you got Tyler Luatua, you got Nick Wisher, and you got Alizé Jones as well. And you've also got Josh Anderson, number 46, who is a great story in his own right, is going to get the carry. He was a walk-on who was awarded a scholarship by Brian Kelly, he, he modeled the Shamrock Series uniform. That, he, he was coming out in front of the team, and this is what happened. That's why I brought him up here, um, because he models a lot of the things that, uh, uh, that are right with Notre Dame football. He's worked hard since he's came here. He's a walk-on. And today, uh, Josh, congratulations. We're awarding you a scholarship. <laughs> Josh Anderson had no idea he was going to go for the scholarship by Kelly. He just thought he was in there to model the Shamrock uniform. But as you heard Kelly say, he has been everything you could ask for. You have to love the reaction of the football team, appreciating the effort that he has put in on scout team day in and day out to earn that scholarship. When he takes a scholarship now, the, the other players are happy for him. They know he earned it. And he's one of the guys, he's been one of the guys from the get-go, and he probably, in their mind, should have deserved it sooner. All right, scout team just uh, getting beat up on all these years. A med student, an incredible student. And in the words of Kelly, as you heard, he just typifies everything that they would love to have out of every single Notre Dame player. Texas coming up with pressure. On Kaiser and Kaiser unable to connect with Corey Robinson and that'll bring up the punting team for Notre Dame so Deshaun Kaiser in his first series in his debut for Notre Dame moves it a little ways but Notre Dame forced to punt with five and a half remaining yeah just a little hesitant on that throw a little shaky on his feet and didn't step into it and bounces it to a wide open receiver Tyler Newsom sends it to Jay Johnson's way. Knocked out of bounds just short of the 15-yard line. Notre Dame in control from the outset, 38-3. As the Irish look to open up a huge win convincingly over Texas. Followed by the race at 7 on NBC. I know you had a chance to get in a NASCAR recently. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, four wide coming down the back stretch, rubbing the wall, bumping from behind, 185 miles an hour. You can have it. <laughs> Cyro swoops, gives it to Jonathan Gray. As you see, the 11 possessions, eight three and outs for Texas, as it's been domination by 
the Texas or the Notre Dame defensive line. There is a familiar name to Notre Dame folks, Holtz, Trey Holtz, who is the grandson of former Notre Dame coach Lou Holtz, the son of Skip Holtz. As Jonathan Gray gets the carry, Trey Holtz is the holder for Texas, and he's also the scout team quarterback. And as you can see, he signals in the plays there for them as well. And remember what his dad did here a few years back in the opener right here at Notre Dame Stadium. South Florida Bulls came in here and shocked Brian Kelly in Notre Dame in the opener, but no such shocker tonight. That was a six-hour lightning delay game, wasn't it? And if you won a national title here and you do all the things that Lou Holtz did, that's what Grandpa gets, a statue just outside Notre Dame Stadium. The last national championship won by Notre Dame back in 1988. And the fans, Notre Dame, getting a little bit restless, Doug. They think that this is their year to get get one again from a talent from a depth standpoint no doubt about it that they're in a great position the, the schedule is difficult all the way through if today's any indication they're executing much better than a year ago both defensively and offensively no turnovers on offense a big day for Malik Zaire it appears that it's come together but it is a long road yeah, you, you just you just got to keep slugging it out and Notre Dame, I think, is kind of really helped by what happened last year. They know you can get off to a fast start as the Jay Johnson grabs it. They know you can get off to a fast start and how quickly you can fall. That was one of the most precipitous falls I've ever seen in the college football season. 6-0 and and then what happened to them after that. So that's in the back of their minds. They know it's not far away if you have injuries and whatnot. Their quarterback situation, this is only Malik Zaire's second start, and he's your experienced guy. If he were to get nicked up for a few weeks, you're, you're coming to an unknown to step in in that position, a very important position. You go one or two injuries in the same position. Swoops going way downfield to Foreman incomplete. Nick Coleman, very impressive young freshman corner who they're high on, was running down the sideline. And on the other side of things, you've got Charlie Strong and what he's going through, talking about being outmanned the last two games of last year. If the result holds here, it'll be the worst loss in a season opener since 1988 at BYU. You can see it in the eyes of Charlie Strong. Well, he's got to read some character now out of these guys that are on the field trying to make plays. Who's going to quit and who's going to keep playing? He still has swoops in at quarterback. He hasn't pulled the trigger for Hurd to finish this game. So obviously Swoops is his guy. He didn't like what he saw out of Hurd today. And he's trying to stick with Tyrone Swoops and see if his offense can get something started. You know, you think back as Swoops sends it out to DeJay Johnson. You know, since Colt McCoy got injured in that title game back in 2010, they've really been looking for the next quarterback to get it done. Here's the Longhorn schedule. They've got Rice next week cal and then a really tough part of the schedule when they go to tcu and oklahoma back-to-back -back weeks well they still have some time before the conference schedule starts and that's what they really care i mean they care about every game but the most important games is when the conference start and they have a chance to get it together get some experience for the young kids that are having to play right now they do have talented guys on the field it's just the experience needs to come and, and it needs to come quickly. I mentioned Colt McCoy. Remember, he got hurt in that national title game in Alabama. Beat Texas. And then recruiting, they passed on Andrew Luck. They passed on Johnny Menzel. So there was some a lot of talk along the Longhorn faithful of, you know, do we really make some bad moves at the quarterback position when Andrew Luck had definite interest in the Texas Longhorn programs and they didn't even give him an offer. And we know what Andrew Luck obviously did at Stanford and what he's doing now in the NFL, but you again, that was uh, out of Charlie Strong's hands. That was the Mac Brown era, and Strong is just trying to pick up his own pieces here and get this Texas winning tradition back. You have to be a strong recruiter in the state of Texas, and Strong's approach to that now is to switch his offense to this fast-paced spread offense, recruit the kids from in-state, and you can't make those mistakes on those kind of guys locally. Dixon with a punt and Sanders with a fair catch at the 10. 
Texas going to go back to the drawing board, and Notre Dame looking for their first trip to Charlottesville on the heels of a big win in the opener at home. There's another one of the shuffles on the Brian Kelly coaching staff. Mike Sanford on the left is the new offensive coordinator. He's just 33 years old, coming over from Boise State. That was his first offensive coordinating position job. Mike Denbrock is the associate head coach in charge of the offense, so he kind of oversees the offense, but Sanford is a guy that we talked about in the spring game, Doug, that Kelly says is going to turn the room upside down and kind of give them some new ideas to take this offense into the future. He's going to come in with fresh ideas, but his big impact so far has been on things like footwork and reads. It's no gray area. Everything is black and white. This is how it is supposed to be done, and it has worked for Malik Zaire. He is sure of his decision-making. He knows that this is the way it's got to be done. We're in and out of this play because of this reason. Everything is cut and dry. They, they tweak their footwork a little bit on the zone read, which has even cleaned that up more. It's a collaborative effort in the words of Brian Kelly. So he's been grilled by the local press here and Dexter Williams slammed to the turf. But Kelly wanted to make it clear that it, the collaborative effort, he still gets the final say on plays called as Brecken Hager just leveled Dexter Williams there. It's a huge hit, but what the Notre Dame fans don't like is the uh, activity after the hit. Comes through cleanly and just drills him. But then he adds a little extra, rub him in the ground, stand yeah, over him. Yeah, that's taunting. You cannot do that. That is something that officials have been emphasizing. You, just, you can't stand over the player like that. Kaiser gets a little pressure from the backside, able to avoid it, and running it, and he takes a hit in the helmet as well, and there's some extracurricular activity there as well, and this time a flag comes in. So get a little chippy here late. After the play, Metzler roughness, defense number 49. 15 yard penalty from the dead ball spot automatic first down Derek Roberson Called for the penalty here. It's blatantly late Yeah, there he is 49 coming in and smashing Kaiser when he was well out of bounds. No doubt about that Just trying to he a lot of times the mentality is I've run a long way to chase this guy I'm gonna get a lick and it's two steps to three steps out of bounds, and he takes the shot anyway. I don't know if you're wondering the same thing I'm wondering. I'm wondering what Charlie, Charlie Strong, Strong thinks about that. Don't turn him into Chuck. That's right. In the words of Jonathan Gray, you don't want to see Charlie Strong's alter ego, Chuck, as he calls him. Because you make mistakes, you do stupid things, Chuck comes out. But he might be Chuck Strong all week after tonight because his team got hammered. But outmanned by Brian Kelly's deepest and talented team that he's had here in his six years at Notre Dame proven tonight against Texas Texas knew it would be an uphill battle they know they were a little they knew coming in they were a little bit out man they had young players but I'm sure Charlie Strong expected a better showing than this at least generate some offense they had one big play in the past game down the field and that was about it so frustrating to they knew they were in a tough spot but in all of our conversations with him you would never suspect that it was going to be this easy but in the end notre dame makes it look easy due in large part to number eight in his notre dame stadium debut malik zaire has a huge game 19 to 22 86 percent completion over 300 yards three touchdown tosses and more importantly that'll make brian kelly happy no turnovers and that is the kind of play that you can take deep into college football championship seasons. So Notre Dame starts off with a huge win over Texas, 38-3. We'll be back to Notre Dame Stadium with some final thoughts to wrap up this season opener for the Irish in just a moment. Welcome back to Notre Dame. The 
Fighting Irish with a 38-3 victory over the Texas Longhorns in the season opener. Coach, you knew you had a versatile quarterback coming into this season, but how would you grade Malik Zaire's performance tonight? I thought it was a good opener for him. You know, there were some things that obviously that he's going to learn from in the opener, and that's, you know, again, he's this is his second start, but did some really good things, threw the ball down the field, ran the ball, ran our offense, and he doesn't have to be the reason why we win it. And uh, he's got a great cast of characters around him that he could get in the football. And then defensively, we did some really good things today, too. You lost one of your biggest offensive weapons early in the game in Tarian Falson. How would you grade the play of the guys that came in and stepped up in his absence? Well, I thought Josh Adams came in as a true freshman. He's got, you know, obviously elite speed, great size. And as a freshman, he carries himself as an upperclassman. So, you know, obviously we'll, we'll have to evaluate where uh, Torian is. He's a big part of our offense. But Josh came in and did a great job. Coach, thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. And uh, as the alma mater concludes, there has been a little bit of a history of lackluster season openers for Brian Kelly and the Notre Dame football team, but tonight was anything but that, Doug. They came out of the gate. Zaire was on fire. Great offensive line play. When you have time to throw the football, when you have time to stand there and pick and choose, the ball rarely touches the ground. Physically on the offensive and defensive lines, dominated the game. They know they have talent this year, and they know it's, it can be a special year, and they don't want anything to get by. It was such a convincing win. Is it a little bit of like, eh, you're still kind of wondering what Notre Dame has? Because Texas really, in my opinion, was a, a little under, not just a little, but pretty underwhelming. Absolutely. The they're, they're, they're a young team. Uh, inexperienced quarterback struggled struggled in the offensive line you don't know how good Texas is or how bad they are yeah, right now it's early so it's a win it's early it's the first game we move to week two but it's a great confidence builder for Notre Dame and also giving some of those younger players a chance to get some game action so several freshmen got into the act including Deshaun Kaiser the backup for Malik so for Brian Kelly's full press conference, you can go to NBCSports.com. Coming up next, except for the West Coast, it's your local news. And in two weeks, Notre Dame returns to NBC for the Fighting Irish take on Georgia Tech, Saturday, September 19th on NBC. Right now, stay tuned with us on NBCSN for the Notre Dame postgame show. For our entire NBC crew, Dan Hicks, thanking you for watching, saying so long on NBC from South Bend, where Notre Dame wins at 38-3. Notre Dame football presented by Coke Zero.